In Watcher 21, we've reorganised the way that we present sample percussion instruments. The idea behind this was to make it much easier to create generative beats and pulses without having to bother the pattern editor too much, because we all know that the pattern editor is the least friendly place in Watcher. So this video, I'm going to look at what the new system is, why it's better than the old way of doing things, and I'll suggest some ways that you might want to start exploring generative rhythms. Firstly, the way we've worked up till now is the way that percussion instruments have always been organised in general, midi and similar conventions. So you have one preset, usually the last preset in the bank, and you define that as the drum kit. And the drum instruments are laid out chromatically inside that preset with one drum sound per key. So, if you want a particular kick sound, you have to know exactly which key it's been mapped to and hit the exact note number every time you want it to sound, which is fine if you're working in a grid-based trigger sequencer or something similar, but it's never fitted well with a generative way of doing things. So we decided we'd had enough of that and took a different approach. What we've done instead is we've taken each drum instrument and given it its own personal preset. One preset, one drum voice mapped across the full range of the MIDI keyboard. One big drum. The most obvious advantage to doing this is that you can now see at a glance which instruments are present in the sound collection because they're all listed as presets. You don't need a cheat sheet anymore to know which drum is sitting on which MIDI note. But that's not the best part. The really big advantage now is that notes don't matter anymore. If you select a drum preset, then that is the sound you will hear whatever note Watcher plays. And that's worth repeating, notes don't matter. So because the notes don't matter, the voice type that you use to create rhythmic phrases doesn't matter much either. You can still use patterns as before, but now you can use rhythmic, following, repeating and text-to-music voice types to generate rhythms, which means we can easily make rhythms that are derived from cell or voice generative rules. And we can also make more complex and varying rhythmic patterns by the creative use of the delay parameter for the following voices and the delay parameter when creating voices that have chords. And this opens up a whole new way of working with beats in Watcher. So let's have a quick look at a little test piece in action. Here I've set up this simple test piece just using voices from the new IM Drum sound font. Here are all the instruments available in there listed as presets and you just pick one in the usual way. This first voice is the only pattern type voice I'm using today and it's as simple as patterns get. It's just four quarter notes. To keep it structured, but to still add some variation, I've set it so that it doesn't use the pattern all the time. Occasionally, it'll take a break from the pattern and compose something based on the rhythm rule for this voice. So hopefully that will give us a foundation beat, but something that isn't totally predictable. The next voice down is a different drum sound composing freely as a rhythmic voice following its own rules. Really basic stuff. Following that voice is a higher pitched drum sound. And if we look at the follow strategy, you can see that it's not going to follow the note every time. And when it does follow, it's always going to be an eighth of the beat after the parent voice. I've done this because the effect that I want these two voices together to give I want them to sound a bit like a pair of drums being played two-handed. And the last voice is a shaker. Again, it's just a rhythmic voice, so it's going to compose according to its own voice rhythmic rule.
And then if you lay uh, just a basic musical bed underneath this, you get something that holds together quite well, I think. Another advantage of this way of doing things is that because each drum voice is in a separate preset, any modulations you apply to a voice will only affect that voice. Here's a quick example. I'll solo the bass drum from the demo file and add an envelope to apply a pitch bend to the voice. which sounds okay. And if I now bring in the other hand drum voices, you can hear they're completely unaffected by the pitch bend envelope. Whereas if I was doing this with a drum preset that used chromatic mapping, all the voices in the preset would bend the same. So there's lots of creative fun you can have by processing the individual presets and create a lot more varied drum sounds from the same core samples. And, as someone used to say, one last thing. If, like me, you're allergic to the pattern editor, then text-to-music voices are a wonderful alternative. Here, I've set up a hi-hat voice. And just given it a little bit of appropriate text to work with. And now, when I hit play, we get a recognisable pattern that will evolve and shift a little bit over time, but still keeps its original coherence. And, as it's a hi-hat, if I add some chord parameters with an eighth note delay, it gets even better. So there we are. Just a very little taster of some of the things you can do with generative rhythms once you are free from having to worry about which note to hit. Have fun.